Welcome back, folks. Triple Crown here, coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia. It's Thursday evening, um, and I received an HBG gift card for my younger brother, Jesse, for Christmas. And I made a purchase, and it's now third week of January, dark and gloomy days in Vancouver. But hey, we're gonna get through it. We're gonna get through it because the post ban has arrived delivering the HBG package. So we are doing another unboxing video, I'm very excited. Some more pieces to add to the collection. So here we go, here we go, here we go, as my friend VK Cowboy likes to say when he rolls dice. And speaking of dice, I added uh, some more of these uh, gray uh, D12 to the collection. I, I like these when I was doing the last Global War 1939 play test. I, I really like these dice, and I found when I'm rolling in mitzvahs of 15 or 20, um, maybe maybe it's better to, to, you know, to make sure I have 15 or 20 dice to roll. So add it to the collection. Also love this uh, this blue color, More some more D12s. You can never have enough colors of D12s when you play Night Global War 1939. I sure like these uh, gray Balkan cross as opposed to the red. I think they're just a little bit more kind of a weathered look, um, kind of a, a, a little bit of a, a little bit softer on the eyes. Ooh, we've got lots of stuff going on here. Got some more decals for first. Some more. These are look like uh, Canada. If you can see them, they got the, the Canadian roundel on them. Some more, uh, more Japanese with the white circle. And now that, I don't even know if I'm allowed to show you. This is for a game that I'm working on with Hilltop Pillbox. And I'm not allowed to show these pieces. Um, however, I th think I can show this because I don't think it's going to give anything away. Um, well, this is something for Doug. I'm helping Hilltop Hillbox work on a game with Doug for HBG. And this is German Airfield on it. That's a cool, that's a very cool looking uh, coaster. The other one, I think I can show you. I'll just show you. Here we go. So we got the, the British, the American, the two airborne, the 101st and 82nd, I believe. Uh, and then the Canadian. So very exciting, very exciting. Uh, more B-29 uh, Super Fortresses. Um, I painted some, didn't really like the sculpt that much. Um, I find sometimes when I get too much paint on the sculpt that uh, um, it's just better to buy another one. <laughs> start, start over. So there you go, love these sculpts. The B-29 Super Fortress, done a video on these. Uh, a plane that is years and years ahead of its time. So in terms of payload and speed and height this bomber could flew, um, really sort of a game changer. Late in the Second World War, of course, that's the plane that dropped the atomic bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Now this, I believe, is another um, Global 1939 specific sculpt. Now, I ordered the Siamese soldier, so I, th I believe that's what this is. If not, it could be the Italian paratrooper, which is the fog lore, and I just can't remember which is which. So I'm gonna open the other one up. So th uh, these are both Global War 1939 specific sculpts that Doug made for the game. That one's rifle is missing. Sometimes that happens during shipping or packaging. Yeah, this is the Siam, I believe this is a Siam infantry sculpt, 3D print. So this can be used for, or maybe this is the paratrooper. I, you know what folks, I don't know which is which. So this could be the Siam, the, the Siam infantry, which I think this is, even though it's got the backpack on, but I could be wrong. It could be the Italian fog lore, which is the Italian paratrooper. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm looking at this stuff, I, th I think I know what it is. And then I go look it up and I'm actually wrong. 
So even though I'm the one that helped design it, which... <laughs> Sorry, folks, sometimes you just got to laugh at yourself. These are some 3D printed AM60. So uh, very cool looking, uh, a little bit more authentic than the out of box sculpts you get. Of course, it's got the, uh, the wheels on, you can see, which I think adds another element. Um, they also tend to sit. If you're gonna lie them on the, on the mat, or you don't always say you're, they just seem to sit a little bit better on the carriers, I find, so love those. It's a very, very iconic looking World War II aircraft, so. Yes, those are gonna look very nice painted up. And the Majestic, um, this is an escort carrier, so it's kind of a, um, now let me get a regular size aircraft carrier. So you can see almost the same size. So maybe it actually is a full size carrier. I'm gonna to have to do a bit more research. So this is the, you can see here, this is what I like about the 3D, pre, 3D printed HBG naval units is sometimes when you're not sure what the heck is this, you look on the bottom and it's got the name uh, etched in so you know what it is. So very cool looking carrier. You can see it's got a nice little tower on it. Love those. I think that's a, I'm not even sure if that's a British. Um, or yeah, I'm gonna have to do more. I'm gonna have to do a bit more research on that. Now we have here, I think this is a, some test pieces. This is a bunker, a bunker complex. So sometimes Doug, when he's doing concepts of stuff, um, looks like, uh, yeah, definitely some sort of uh, in, uh, concrete encasement bunker. We've got uh, some Shermans with the, uh, look the grill on the front to looks like to uh, help clear beaches or obstacles on a beach. And we have, what do we have here, folks? We talked about these, the Czech Hedgehogs. Love these, wanted to get them into the game somehow. I just think when you watch the movie Saving Private Ryan and these are on the beach and the troops are coming to shore, they just, they, they are scary looking. I don't know what it is about them, but when you're, can you imagine being in a ship and uh, embarking and, and these massive steel structures were there? I mean, they just look imposing. But I guess for the soldiers on D-Day, they also helped, at least in Saving Private Ryan, some cover from the soldiers on the shore, which might've been the only cover they had. Um, but uh, yeah, we are, we are gonna get these in a 39 as more of a, a just a, for me, it's gonna be a sculpt that I use to represent pieces. So I think it's gonna represent the, the bunker complexes, the, the smaller ones, the pillboxes. So but yeah, very, very cool. In terms of size to infantry, you can see they're a little bit smaller. So um, I kind of, I, I, I think I like that because I know, I know what it is, but um, I think some of the feedback from some of our, our guys in our group were talking about different sizes. So guys, let me know what you think, if this should be bigger or a smaller. It's another uh, bunker complex. It like, looks like it's got a, some kind of MG or something pointing out the side. So very, very cool. Um, very cool looking piece. This is another, uh, looks like this is an, 80, an 88 pointed hor horizontally. Another very cool looking, uh, looks, looks like a coastal gun. Very, very cool. I'm not sure what this is. These are all concept pieces that Doug has sent me. He's playing with ideas sometimes and he gets our feedback. We paint it up and we give him the, uh, what we think of it. This is some sort of, uh, looks like some sort of coastal gun or coastal artillery. And I'm not sure what this is. Very cool looking. I think that's, oh, we've got another, 
another tank here and it looks like some kind of Sherman with the bulldozer on the front of it. Some more Barbarossa dice. Because now in the, in the Gold War 1939, the Barbarossa attack is now three attacks, not one. And some more Italian. These are the Italian, I, I believe, the, the co-belligerents. So when Italy gets flipped to the Allies, these are the new Italian co-belligerent roundel, which represents the, the pro-Allied um, Italian forces. And we have a, a gift from Doug. It's a magazine for D-Day, June 6, 1944. Strategy, Tactics, and Quarterly. So very, very interesting. Um, of course, uh, you know, my, my good friend G.I. Joe, he's, uh, he's been to the, these beaches several times, and, and Hilltop's been um, very, one of the most... Um, maybe studied or talked about um, battles of World War II. Um, a lot of people refer to this as the turning point. So I'm going to enjoy reading this. Thank you very much, Doug. This is called the, uh, wow, Decision Game Strategy Tactics Quarterly. Very cool. Very happy to be receiving this. Well, that, well folks, that's all I got here. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, in closing here, um, uh, I apologize, folks. I, I, I've been working a lot lately, and I'm doing a BBR game against some very, very tough opponents. Detroit and Sireblood are my, my partners. We are facing G.I. Joe and Hambone and VK, which in my mind are, if you were to order rank the top BBR players in the world, they would be in the top uh, five, or t depending on who you felt was the best, but they would be in the top five, uh, those gentlemen that we're playing. So we were preparing to go to St. Louis, and uh, what uh, may, as well, may as well face the best. So, so there you go. Uh, but I will be doing a, um, a video again soon, um, just sort of talking about if you're going to do a game by YouTube or WhatsApp, just some tips uh, that I've picked up along the way and, and, and why I think it's it's good. If you cannot meet your friends in person, if you're going to be doing Global War 1939 or other variants, why playing by WhatsApp or YouTube or private YouTube is a fantastic option to get in your gaming. Besides painting and besides watching World War II documentaries or... Or, or, or just pulling these pieces up and saying, wow, like these are cool. These are very cool. So thanks for watching, folks, and stay tuned.